Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I'm working on Lori Holt's Calico Garden and I have gotten up to the Hollyhocks block. I'll put a picture of it right here. This block is what I would call a real doozy. It has stems that are longer than the largest embroidery hoop. One of them is 19 inches and the other one is 15 inches. And while that 15 incher will fit into the Luminaire's 10 by 16 hoop, it's it's just gonna be a lot of shenanigans to try to get everything to fit and work out right. So I will not be designing the entire block in Embrilliance like I normally do in Stitch Artist 2. If this is your first time joining me, I fully automate the applique process using Lori Holt's simple shapes and tracing them into the Brother Scan and Cut and then converting that digital file from the Scan and Cut into an embroidery design using Embrilliance Stitch Artist 2. So I will link to videos up above that take you back to when I was making chicken salad and I go through it baby step by baby step. It's really an amazing, amazing process once you get the hang of it. On hollyhocks, there's all these different fabric circles that represent the blossoms and I am going to cut those out using the scan and cut. So what I did was, for instance, on this particular fabric right here, I have a sticky note and it says 105204-04, not zero, 04, 102 and 201s. So I'm going back and forth between those two pictures on the Hollyhock blog post and identifying how many and which circles I need to cut using this. I'll group all of those together on the scan and cut mat. It's really easy to not get the blossom right on the stem where you want it. So I will have one embroidery design for each simple shape and lay them all out first and figure it out. So I'll have all of my circles cut first and then I'll lay them all out on the stems. I'm gonna use a friction marker and I'm going to create a crosshair exactly where that blossom needs to go and then I will put the number of the blossom, the shape. If I can do it on the back, I will. I may do it on the front of each blossom shape. I'm going to number the shape with what number it is because these shapes are very close. These circles are very close in size and it's really easy to mess them up. And if you mess one up and you put the wrong one on, don't die over it. Nobody will know but you. I'm just gonna place them exactly where they need to go, okay? And do what I can to try to get it as close as possible. For the stems, because one of them is too long for the biggest hoop on the market, I will iron those stems down on the background fabric and then I'm going to use my domestic sewing machine and just run a blanket stitch, very small blanket stitch all the way around it using the domestic. I'm gonna do that for both of them because it's just easier to get it all done in one fell swoop once I have the machine already configured to the size that I want for the stitches and blah, blah. So that's the plan for the Hollyhock block. I've already done this fabric and this fabric and now I need to do this last fabric. So in Brother Canvas, I'm gonna group a single 05, a single 04, and two 02s and put them together and bunch them together in a corner of the mat or somewhere. And then that's where this whole piece of fabric will go. And I'll make sure that it all fits on there, figure out the size, and then cut all the circles out at one go. That's the beauty of being able to do this on the scan and cut. But you gotta pay attention to what's where and where you put it. So because this fabric is the first fabric in the first picture at the top, I'm going to call this number one. I'm gonna put a one on it in a circle. So now the very, this number one fabric has these shapes. We'll see if this works. <laughs> so then this one is number two. When I get finished with this, we'll jump into Brother Canvas and get this all set up. Hey, I'm here at Brother's Canvas Workspace. It's canvasworkspace.brother.com. 
and you don't have to have a brother machine to use this. It's a very handy place to play around with SVG files and import them and mess around with them. So I'm going to log in. You can tell it remember me and it won't, so it doesn't matter. This download button right here is for the downloadable version of this. I don't use that. I'm going to tell it don't ask me again. Uh, it usually does. So I am going to come over here to the new button. This is a new project. And I traced around all of the simple shapes for Lori Holt's Calico Garden. And I scanned them all into the Brother Scan and Cut and then save them in the Canvas workspace. I have a new mat right here. I'm going to come over to My Projects, this button right here, and it will show all of the things that I have scanned in. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to go to Get More, because these are in numerical order. I put all the shapes in numerical order, scan them, and you can see I numbered each one. You can see the number on there. So I want to get to the very first scan and it was the one with all the circles and here it is right here. So I'm just going to highlight it, grab it and drag it onto the mat. I am going to come up here to the project tab and I'm going to come down here and select the 12 by 24 inches and that will change my mat. So now I need to use the scroll bar to move everything around but the goal is to cut all the fabrics at one time. So let's do the first one and I'm going to start with number one down in the bottom and work my way up toward the top of the mat. It's just easier because every time you load something on the mat it'll load up here in this corner. This is number five. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to right click and duplicate and I'm going to grab this and move it over here and number four right click duplicate and I'm going to move this right here and I need two O twos this is for fabric number one so right click duplicate I'm going to move this right here and right click and duplicate okay so there are all the circles that I need for fabric number one I'm going to take my cursor and highlight all of them, grab them, and we're going to go down here. And I'm going to put them right there. Okay. Right click. I'm going to group. So I want to show you if you click on one here, it shows you this is 1.56 by 1.55. All right. So you would want to make your fabric just a little bit bigger than that so that you have got enough for it to stick to the mat and still cut. So I am going to highlight them all and see you don't get a size when you highlight them all. So you need to right click and group. That tells me it's 4.28 by 4.88. I'm going to write on the little sticky note that I pinned to the fabric and I'm going to increase the size by an inch. So I'm going to go, this needs to be five point, let's see, two eight, oh, I don't know, let's say five and a half. So 5.5 by, we'll say six, instead of 5.88, we'll say six. So this needs to be five and a half by six. That's the size of the fabric I need to cut all of that out. If I need to move these around at all, once I download it, they will, if I leave it grouped, they will move as a group when they get to the machine and they cannot be ungrouped. So I am going to right click and ungroup. If I need to group them at the machine, I can. At the scan and cut, I can. So I'm just going to leave them right there. Okay, so that's fabric number one down here in this corner. Now I need to do fabric number two and I need 105. So I'm going to highlight it and right click, duplicate, pull that one over here. I need two O fours, duplicate, and right click, duplicate, okay, and I need one O two, right click, duplicate, and I need two O ones, right click, duplicate, and right click, duplicate. Okay, so there is everything I need on fabric number two. I'm going to highlight them all. And I'm going to drag them over here and put them down here in this corner. And I'm going to right click and group. And this needs to be 
I'm going to say seven and a half by six. And then the last one, I'm going to grab all of these and move them off the mat. And for fabric number five, I need one zero four. I need two o threes. And I need two o ones. Okay. And now these over here, I'm going to highlight these and I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. Okay. I'm going to come over here to project title and I'm going to type hollyhock and I'm going to come up to project and I'm going to hit the inbox with an arrow and a plus sign that will save as a new project saving this project is completed I'm going to tell it OK and now I'm going to download it I'm going to download it to the scan and cut I'm going to click scan and cut transfer OK, now it's in temporary memory so that the scan and cut can pull it in. I'm going to hit close. I'm going to do something a little bit different on this. I don't know what's what because I didn't I don't have the numbers. Let me highlight everything. Hit delete and highlight everything. Hit delete. This is for the embroidery file. So my project, I'm going to go back to a 12 by 12 mat. We are only using circles one through five. So I'm going to pull these in. Here's one, two, three, four, five. Everything else I'm going to delete. I'm going to move these back. I'm keeping them in order. So, I mean, it's easy to tell by the size. I'm going to stitch each one of these one at a time. So I only need to download one instance of it. I'm going to save this as hollyhock dash emb those are the embroidery designs project save as new okay and I'm gonna download and I'm gonna download to PC it's the FCM file there it is right there and I will put it into in brilliance and create the embroidery design I'm gonna hit close and we are finished so I'm gonna go to in brilliance now and I want to show you how I'm gonna do this so I've opened in Brilliant. I'm going to come up here to the Stitch Artist button. That's this, it looks like a pointer on some stitches. I'm going to click that. This is Stitch Artist 2. If you don't have Stitch Artist 2, you won't see this vector button right here. So I'm going to click Vector, and I'm going to bring in Hollyhock EMB. That's what I want, and I'm going to click Open. Now this is the master file, okay? And I'm not going to make this into an embroidery design. I'm going to save this as Hollyhock FCM Master and click Save. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to take my cursor and I'm just going to draw a line. All right, I'm still on vector. I have not turned this into an embroidery file yet. I'm just going to draw a line around the first one while my hand is on it right click copy I'm gonna come up to new there's the new button it gives me a new untitled 2 and I'm gonna say right click and paste okay it's still a line now I'm going to come up here to the blanket stitch button and hit applique there we go it doesn't look like it on here but you can see it here it turned it into applique so that's pretty small. That's a pretty small circle, about an inch and a half. So I'm going to make the stitch width, like, maybe I'll go three. And the stitch length, I'm going to put it 2.0. And that'll look really good. Okay. I'm going to save this. I'm going to say File, Save Stitch File As, because I'm not going to fiddle with it at all after this. And this is Calico Garden. I'm going to call it Hollyhock HH Dash. O one save this didn't change because I didn't name the working file file let me save stitch and working and I'm gonna save it as hollyhock dash o one and it's saving to PES because that is my main that's what I have it saved as whatever embroidery machine you have you can come here and you can save it to whatever file format you need and I'm gonna click save do I want to replace it? Yes. So now that I changed the working file, it changed the name on the tab up here. This is Hollyhock Embroidery FCM. I don't want that to be the FCM file. You know what? Let me close this. I'm going to open Hollyhock Embroidery. 
number one. All right. One of these is the FCM file, and one of them is the stitch file, which is which? PES is the second one. So, because P comes after E. So I'm going to do this. You can see it. I'm going to click open. There it is. Let me go bigger so you can see it. That looks really good. I want to make sure that's in the center of the screen. See, we're on zero. Let me put a view. Let's draw a hoop. There we go. Pretty big hoop. I will be using the big hoop because I've got all kinds of blossoms I need to stitch here. But that is number one, so that's fine. Okay. I'm going to hit Control S to save it. And I'm still in Calico. I'm going to click Save. And it'll overwrite. Yes, that's fine. So I'm happy with that. That looks really good. So if you noticed when I was in the drawing line file, it still said FCM up here. And you couldn't see the stitches on the screen. So I closed it and then reopened just the embroidery file, not the working file. So Untitled 3, here's that line drawing. It doesn't matter where it is on the screen. I'm going to open up Stitch Artist. I'm going to click the Applique button. You can see it turned into Applique over here. Now, the stitch length and the width, it retained the same ones that it had from the last time I changed it. And that's fine. Those will look just fine. And I'm going to File, Save Stitch and Working. And I'm going to call it Hollyhock dash O2. Save. Now let's close that. And now I want to open. And I'm going to open Hollyhock O2. The second one is the embroidery file. See it? And open. That's great. I'm going to continue to do this for the rest of the circles. Okay, I'm going to put my fabrics on my heat and bond in the same order that I have them listed on the mat once I take off this, the paper so I know which one's which because they're cut to size. So number one goes right here and you guys when I do my heat and bond this is the adhesive side up paper side down and I just lay my fabrics a little fraying there just so the outside edge is covered just a tiny bit like that. So the fabric hangs over the adhesive just a tiny bit. This is the most efficient way I have found to do this. So I know that number one was over here in this part of the mat. Number two is right here and it hangs over a couple of threads so that no adhesive, I can actually put my iron on both of these, right like this, okay? So that's two. And then three is going to go right here. Let me get you up taller so you can see what I'm doing. This is a little unorthodox, but it works so well and so efficiently so that you're not constantly trying to exact size every little thing. All right, so number four goes right here. See, and I just put it over just a tiny bit. And this prevents me from getting adhesive on my iron, okay? And then number five, we'll put right here, just like this. All right, so there's no adhesive showing. And I just do a quick tack down from this side to put the fabrics and stick them to the mat. This is not the final press because you need to press this to the point that it almost looks glassy on the back. But you don't want to get adhesive. Okay, so now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim right on the edge of the fabric so that there's no uh, adhesive showing. I don't want to get adhesive on my ironing surface and I don't want to get adhesive on my iron. So this is how I do this. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and just cut this piece off. That'll be a scrap in the bolt. It's 
sometimes I will take the whole bolt, bolt over to the cutting mat and do this with a rotary cutter. And sometimes I'll put a cutting mat up on, you know, if it's a small enough piece, I'll put a cutting mat right on the ironing surface and just cut it right here. I have a rotary cutter in the drawer for just such a purpose. But if you don't cut at your ironing station. Okay. See, this is this little piece right here would be trash. Okay. Okay, we're here at the scan and cut and to load the mat there is a series of buttons a row of them right here a column of buttons and this middle one you have the on and off and then you have home load and pause I'm gonna load and you load by just pushing the edge of the mat right up against the edge of the rollers right there we're gonna zoom in now on this main screen I get a lot of questions about this little accessory cup that's right here. This is a command razor cup that you would use in the shower and it works perfect. I put it on all of my scan and cuts to hold my tools. We've got two big buttons here on the screen and this is pattern and scan. Well pattern is patterns that are in the machine when you bought it. Those are native to the machine. And then down here we have a button that says retrieve data. Well, we sent the data down from the Canvas Cloud to cut all of our circles, so I'm gonna hit Retrieve Data, and it wants to know where do you wanna get it from. I can get it from inside the machine if I had saved a external pattern in the machine. You can get it from the cloud, from a USB, or you might be cabled to your computer. I wanna get it from the cloud. So here are all of the circles, and there is a down arrow right there that I can see the bottom half, and see how it's dark? I have to tell the machine that we're going to be using a 12 by 24 inch mat because it defaults to the 12 by 12. So all I have to do is come over here to the little wrench and cut area 11 by 11, 11 it's, it's a smidge over 11 and a half on both of these. I'm just going to touch that. So this button right here is the 12 by 24 and that'll, that'll work fine. I'm going to tell it okay and tell it okay. Now when I come back down here and hit this arrow down I can see the bottom half of the mat without the blocked out part. Okay so I'm going to go back up to the top and now there is a button right here. It looks like your mat with a little bar across it. That is the scan button for the machine to take a picture of what's on the mat. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm just going to hit this button and I'm going to tell it start. This is hard to see if you come over to the wrench and you've got background, dark or light. Let me hit the light background and click OK. That makes it much easier to see the circles. All right, so it lightened up the background of the fabric. I could leave these, but I'm going to move. Oh, those are grouped. Good deal. That was easy. <laughs> this group right here needs to come up. That's good. This group needs to come up. I'll go down. Okay, these are not grouped. I need to group them to make my life easy. I'm going to hit edit. And these three red boxes are group. And it wants to know, do you want to group all of the mat or part of the mat? I want to group part of the mat. And I am going to come up. I'm going to grab this and drag it way down. And drag it over and drag it over so that just those circles are grouped. Okay? 
and I'm going to tell it OK. Now, see, oh, I missed one. OK, so I'm going to pull these all up at one time and I'll do, whoop, oh, they are grouped. All right, so I'm going to hit the X. OK, everything is off. There we go. Yeah, if I had left these grouped, they would be able to move all at one time. So that might have been a lot easier. OK, that looks really good. I'm going to tell it OK and OK. Please select. I'm going to cut. We're backing out of the menu and start. Awesome. All done. Okay, I'm going to eject the mat by hitting this button up here on the menu bar again and close this. Finished cutting. Thank you very much. I have no desire to cut those myself. This is wonderful. So now I'm going to try to pull up the tape right along with pulling the fabric off. It just makes life easier in the end. If I can save it, I'll try to. Look at this. Oh, you guys. So nice not to have to cut these by hand. This is what I'm talking about. And you use less fabric because the directions have you use a larger piece of fabric to accommodate cutting everything. Look at this. Perfect. If you don't use heat and bond light, I recommend using hot fix adhesive. That one also works. Um, I, I, heat and bond light seems to work fine. If you use Misty Fuse, I, I have not had good luck with that. So if you're not using heat and bond light or hot fix adhesive, please do a test before you cut on your good fabric and make sure that it's going to hold and it's going to work. I stick with what works. Great. I'm stacking these according to size and I will look on the blog picture to see which fabric goes where when it's time to stitch all these together. Awesome. Okay, excellent. So all of our hollyhock blossoms are cut now. This is great. Love this. Four, three, two, size two, and size one. So just like Lori shows on the blog, there they all are. But we're ready to go embroider them down. Mm -hmm.